Okay, sorry if there's like a vacuum noise going. I don't want, I only have half an hour to film this, so I'm not gonna wait for the vacuum to stop. Spoiler alert, by the way. So today I am not reviewing a book by Maria Lu since I think I've read all the ones she has published and instead I am reviewing The Girl of Fire and Thorns by Ray Carson, which I thought was a really good book. I really liked it quite a bit. So the main character is Elisa, and I liked her a lot. She's not a cliche character at all. A lot of times in YA you get like the same character with a different name over and over again, and I did not find that to be the case with her at all. And it wasn't just because she was fat. Well, a lot of reviews I've read, they're like, oh, I like her. She's fat, so she's different. For me, okay, yeah, that's true, and that is unique in YA fiction. But it's, to me, more about her personality and about her character growth. Because she starts out this really meek person who's kind of scared and, like, knows that they're destined to do something great because of her, like, godstone. But she is more than that. And then she grows to be this, like, great ruler of this, like, rebellion. And she can kind of just do whatever she wants, and she gains all of this confidence and I think that is really cool. And then Alejandro, King Alejandro. He's an interesting character though. I'm not really sure what I think of him as a person. He married Elisa because of like political reasons, which makes, I mean, sense in like the time period or whatever. But then he had a mistress, which again still makes sense. He wasn't a very good king though, which again makes sense. Like all of these things, like it makes sense in the world that they're in. But I don't know if I would like want to be his friend or not. We also don't really get to know him that well since he's not really in a whole lot of it. He's kind of more like talked about a lot because Lisa gets kidnapped pretty quickly and even before that he doesn't really hang out with her very often. Though I did think it was interesting that when she came back and she had lost a bunch of weight, he all of a sudden was interested in her in her in a, like a physical way. But I am glad that he redeemed himself at the end because his son really needed to have a father remembered as a hero, not as a coward and a weak ruler. So then Cosme. She really surprised me. I was not expecting her to be who she was. She was a really good character, really interesting character. I liked her a lot. And then Umberto. I loved him. He was a great character and I loved that he loved Elisa for who she was, like even when she was fat, which I guess is kind of a big deal in the book. It doesn't matter. He just likes her. He doesn't care about physical appearance. He just he loves her. Um, I wish that we got to know what his like plan was for how he and Elisa could be together. I was like, I want to know! And I was really shocked and saddened by his death. Like, I definitely got choked up. It happened so quickly. It was a lot like Enzo's death in The Young Elites, where it was like so fast I almost thought it didn't really happen. Like, I thought they made it seem like he died, but then they dragged him off so quickly he really wasn't dead and he was the gonna come back later or something. But didn't happen. It wasn't the case. He did die. And I was very surprised, but it kind of makes sense because I feel like when you see somebody murdered right in front of you, it probably is pretty quick. And then Jimena. The only thing I really want to mention about her is I don't like, ooh, it frustrated me so much that she wouldn't just tell Elisa all the things she needed to know and all the things that Jimena knew about the Godstone and about the Bearer because I feel like Elisa would have been a little bit better off if she had had, you know, the person who was raising her her whole life not lying to her. That bugged me. And I was a little bit annoyed that Elisa wasn't more annoyed about it. She's just like, oh, well, she's a religious zealot. She's, like, doing it because she thinks it's right. I'm like, yes, but so are the bad guys. They are saying it because of God. So why is it okay when she does it but not okay when they do it? I was like, ugh. So then the story. I thought it was a really interesting story and very engrossing. I read it pretty quickly. Very cool premise as well with the whole, like, well, I love it when it's in another world, but one that's kind of similar to our own in a way. And I liked the whole thing with the Godstone. That was cool. I really liked that there was a lot of Spanish influence in it because I speak Spanish, and so I'm interested in the culture of Spain and whatnot. All the names were Spanish, lots of other things like that. The places were very Spanish. So yeah, I liked that. There were a lot of good twists. I never knew what was coming in this book, including the love interest. Like usually, I've had people tell me like two different characters in a book I haven't read and nothing else, nothing, no plot, just the two characters, and I'll know which one the, char the main character ends up with. With this one, I was completely off. I knew she wasn't gonna end up with Alejandro besides being married to him, but like, I mean, who she actually loved. I originally thought it would be Hector, his guard, who I didn't even mention in the character section because he's not a very big character. But I thought that's who she'd fall in love with, but turned out it was Umberto. And I mean, once I met Umberto, I was pretty sure, but I was like, oh, I bet she falls in love with this royal guard guy. Nope. No, she doesn't. And then there's also a lot of other plot twists as well. Like even the fact that she got kidnapped or going to the Conde Trevino's place and Umberto's death, all of these things did not expect. So then the writing style. I thought that her writing is very interesting on a couple different layers and the two I want to talk about is on a religious level and on a linguistic level. Uh, as far as religion goes, she had a really interesting way about writing about religion. It was kind of interesting because I was raised Catholic. I went to Catholic school all of my life until now. 
So I am very well versed in Catholic teachings. And it was kind of interesting because there were like some similarities between Catholicism and whatever religion they were doing, but some different stuff. And I thought some of the stuff that she wrote about was really cool. And it was very cool that she could like make up her own religion that really worked. And like I said before, everything that happened to, had to do with the Godstone was cool. You know, like it like warned her or how it like warmed up when she prayed. Stuff like that was cool. Um, and then as far as linguistic stuff goes, there's a section where people are speaking in a different language and it's written in that language and then in English afterwards. And I thought it was cool. I could read the other made up language because it was very similar to Spanish and I speak Spanish. That was cool. I liked that and I also like linguistics. So all of that part, it was only like three or four lines that people spoke, but it was really cool, I thought. I wish there had been a little bit more of that. Like I wish that I don't know. I don't know how easy that would have been to do, but it was cool. And then the world itself is very cool with like the like the geographic stuff and the desert all around and the like oasis in the middle and her kingdom and like I can see that we've only really seen the north where her kingdom, her original kingdom was and then the middle where she lives now and then the east. I'm interested to see what's in the south and the west. Hopefully we'll see that in the sequels. So overall, on Goodreads I gave this book four stars because it wasn't as good as The Young Elites, but I would really give it 4.5 stars because it was really good. It was a very good book. I am on a good streak of books right now. It's very good. I recommend it for sure. There's one thing I want to say really quick before I wrap it up here, and that is about a really cool thing I found online that I think if you guys enjoy reading, which if you're watching these videos, you probably do. So there's this website called audiobooksync.com. I'll leave a li link in the description, but it's really cool. They, for the 14 weeks of summer, starting this Thursday, May 7th, they will be giving out for free two audiobooks every week for the next 14 weeks. So it'll be 28 overall. You can download them and keep them forever. It's not like you only get the week to have them. They do one YA novel, which is pretty much what I do here. And then they also do one that's either a classic or it's like a summer reading list book that is paired thematically with the YA fiction. So I know I will be downloading every single one of them because you might like it. It's worth downloading them, right? So I'll leave a link to that in the description. It's definitely something that's really cool and I want to do share that with you guys because I've never heard about it and this is not their first year doing it. I think it'll be cool. I hope you guys enjoy it as well. I will see you guys next week. Bye. Hi. So I know I've been reviewing a lot of Marie Lu this past month or so. 